So now that the new MacBooks are out, I wanted to cover some of my favorite apps that I pretty much use every day and couldn't live without. Before we get into it, make sure to check out my store, store.olio.com, where I have a bunch of wallpaper packs and stuff. It's just a great way to support me if you're into it. So first up is an app called Setup, who are also sponsoring this video. A lot of the apps I'm going to mention in this video are actually from Setup. I would highly recommend it. I've been a Setup paying user for years now. The way it works is that it's basically just a smart way to have access to so many different apps for one subscription and one affordable subscription as well. You have access to so many apps. So you see here we have the Explorer page where you can see apps for all different categories, recently updated, new arrivals, app guides, things like that. Um, we can also go to like how to's and stuff. So many different apps in here. And when we go to all apps, you can see there's so many here. It's insane. Like it's crazy how many apps they have and they keep adding apps as well, which is really great to see. I have some very, very popular apps, things like Supercharge, Bartender, CleanShot X, Numi, um, Hazover, also Downy. Downy is an awesome app if you want to download pretty much any video from the internet. So lots of different apps here. Like I said, a lot of the apps I'm going to mention in this video are actually already available on Setup. I would highly recommend it. And they also have an iOS version so you can get some of the same apps on your iPhone. Make sure to check it out. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. Next up, we have an app called Sleeve. So I listen to a lot of music and when I say a lot of music, I mean over 100,000 minutes in 2024, according to Spotify Wrapped. So I like to use an app called Sleeve to basically just show me what's currently playing. It shows me my album art, artist, track name, and you can also customize it to whatever you like. They have a bunch of themes. I have my own custom theme here that I've sort of modified just to make it look the way I want it to look. You can pretty much customize any element. You can customize the album art size, the font size, and what buttons and stuff you have showing as well. And if you use Spotify like me, you can link it to your Spotify account and have the like functionality on the sleeve app to work with Spotify. So if you're listening to a song that you like, you can like it very quickly without actually having to open up the Spotify app itself. Next up we have Arc. So I have fully switched away from Safari. I've stopped using Safari. There's nothing wrong with Safari to be fair, but Arc for me just makes a lot of sense. I really like the way Arc works. And it's just a fantastic browser. You can also get it on the iPhone as well. By the way, I would actually recommend using Safari if you're someone who likes to use their MacBook on the go regularly because Safari is just so much better at battery management. But anyway, I usually have my laptop here in my setup and stuff. I just much prefer using Arc just for how productive, more productive it makes me. So I fully switched to it. I've been using it over the last year or so and I have converted so many people around me to Arc as well. Uh, when they see me use it, they're like, hmm, that looks interesting. And they start using it and then they realize, oh, actually, this is very, very useful. So there are a few key features as to why I love Arc over other browsers right now. So as you can see, the layout itself is just different. Like you don't have the tabs along the top, you have the tabs along the side. You can also hide the sidebar so you have the full website. This just makes a lot more sense in sort of desktop format because websites are usually in a column layout, anyway, in a vertical layout. So I think it makes a lot more sense to have your tabs on the left hand side like I do here. And you can see a bunch of tabs all at the same time. You can have a ton of tabs and you can sort of vertically scroll on them as well. It just makes it super easy. You can also have different spaces. So you can swipe on the sort of sidebar to go to your different spaces. And the great thing about these different spaces is that they can be set up to have different browsing history, to have different passwords, to have different um, extensions or whatever else. So you could have like a personal space and then you can also have like a workspace. So I have my main space here, which I use for everything, but then I also have another space for my Olio online channel. So because my Olio online channel is a different channel, I wanna be able to have a different login for it, but quickly access it without actually having to go to my YouTube account, Switch accounts and stuff, it's just a lot of work. This just makes it a lot easier. I also have like a PC tab because I also have it on my PC, which is behind me over there. And then I have a clean tab and the clean tab is basically just no history, no passwords or anything like that. If I just wanna show something or search for something or just see a website without being logged in, I like to use the clean space. It's also based on Chrome. So you have all of the same extensions that you get with Chrome, which is a lot more extensions than you get with Safari. So. I just find that it's a lot more convenient to have access to such a large array of extensions. It's a shame they've actually stopped development of Arc. They're not adding any more features as far as I can tell. They're kind of just maintaining it because the developers have basically said that they don't really see anything else being added to it. It's great as it is. And you know what? I sort of agree. Um, I don't really know what other features I'd like to see in Arc. 
but right now as it is, I absolutely love it and it's fantastic. Next up, we have Clean Shot X, which is what I'm using actually to record this very video. I might actually have to do a camera on screen rather than recording the screen to show you what Clean Shot X does because it's a screen shotting and screen recording tool. It simply replaces the built-in Mac screen shotting system and adds a bunch of useful features that, yeah, it just makes a lot of sense. So for example, when you've taken a screenshot, you can quickly edit it and add things like backgrounds, highlight things, shapes, and you can also redact sensitive information, which I use a lot. And the screen recording function also just gives you a bunch more options. You can change things like the resolution, the aspect ratio. You can also have it choose the mic you want to record, mouse clicks, and you can even have a webcam video of yourself on top of the screen recording. If you're like demoing something or just trying to walk someone through something, just like Loom, but then you'd obviously you don't have to pay the subscription that Loom goes for. Next up, we have an app called Eagle. So I like to collect a lot of images, videos and stuff like that just for inspiration when I'm browsing the web and for when I'm designing stuff and taking pictures, whatever it might be, just, just for inspiration, like a mood board sort of thing. And before I used to use Pinterest for that sort of thing, but the issue with Pinterest is that it doesn't actually save the images in a high quality format. You lose a lot of the resolution, you lose a lot of the quality of the images. So Eagle is my app that I use for collecting all of my inspiration and it is fantastic. Like it's such an awesome app. This is one of the apps that I get a lot of questions about when people see it in my setup or when friends see it, they're like, what is that app? It looks amazing. So yeah, in here you can basically just drag and drop images and stuff. You can also just do it from the browser. They do have an extension. So when you find an image, you can just right click it, save it to Eagle. And you can see like, I just have images in here of just random things that inspire me. You can also hover over a video and it will automatically play the video like without having to open up the video, which is fantastic. It's a great way just to see something without actually having to properly open it. And yeah, it saves the images in very, very high quality. So when I click on one, it saves it in the original resolution. And it also saves like the description that it had. It saves where, where you found it. So the original source shows you like information about the images and you can also organize them. So I have a bunch of folders here just to organize the images that I save. Fantastic app, honestly. I absolutely love this app and I use it so much for inspiration. I usually just have it sitting on this screen at all times and I just swipe through it whilst I'm using my main screen just when I'm looking for stuff, when I wanna feel inspired or whatever. Fantastic app and I think it's well worth the, I think it's like $39, well worth the money if you're someone who does sort of design work, photography work, whatever it might be, and you wanna save all of your inspiration in high quality in one place. Also, another thing I completely forgot to mention is that all of the images live on your hard drive or you can put them in cloud storage. So I have mine in my Dropbox. So my library of images is in my Dropbox so I can sync it between machines. But what also makes it really powerful is that you can share libraries with other people. So if you have a shared Dropbox folder, other people can access that library and see it as well. Just a fantastic way if you're working in teams or whatever, for everyone to see all the things that you save. Yeah, fantastic, I love it. Next up is an app called Usage. So Usage, I think is quite new as far as I can tell. And it basically just shows you all of the technical information about your Mac. So you can see your battery, battery health, uh, disk usage, uh, network usage, network data processor, load processor, temperature, memory, just all sorts of stuff. You can basically just see everything about your Mac in one place. So if you wanna see all of the information, anything that's going on with your Mac and just without having to actually go into sort of uh, settings, system preferences and looking at activity, this is so good. It also shows it in a very nice format, like it looks nice. And they also have a menu bar app which you can customize to show things at a glance. So if you don't wanna open the app up and you just wanna see things very quickly, you can do that as well. Fantastic little app just to monitor everything going on with your Mac. Next up is an app called Better Touch Tool and this is more of a sort of utility and I have it for one main function, well, two main functions really. So with the Magic Mouse, which I think is the best mouse in the world, and I don't care what anyone else says, I've been using it for over 10 years now, I have no issues with my hands or anything like that, it's just fantastic, okay? But no arguing, like I just love this mouse. But anyway, with the Magic Mouse, you don't have a scroll wheel. And on a scroll wheel on every other mouse, when you click it, it opens a link in a browser in a new tab. So what I've done is I have enabled a two finger tap on my Magic Mouse to open links in a new tab. And I've done that through Better Touch Tool. Now Better Touch Tool can do so many different things. Like I only have it for that main function. Well, the other main function is sort of window management. It does a really good job of managing windows and stuff. If you wanna like do snapping and things like that. But now that Mac has that built in. Anyway, what makes Better Touch Tool powerful is that you can customize gestures for basically any type of input. 
So I have the Magic Mouse, but you can do things like the Touch Bar if you have a Mac with a Touch Bar, that is. Stream Deck, uh, Trackpad, uh, keyboard obviously, a normal mouse, Siri remote. <laughs> uh, you can do all sorts of stuff. I think even like a MIDI, yeah, MIDI triggers and stuff. There's so much stuff in it. I think you can also um, connect up a controller and adjust what the controller does too. Better Touch Tool is just a nice little utility. It's actually available on Setup as well. And I just have it for that main function of opening tabs it, with the two finger tap. Next up, we have an app called One Switch, which simply lives in the menu bar, giving you quick access to basically different functions on your Mac without having to open up various different things. So you can see here, I have customized it to have things like dark mode, keep awake, uh, do not disturb, uh, true tone, eject disc, high windows, but you can customize it to have you like just a quick way to access sort of essential functions and tools on your Mac. So next up, we have another utility called a folder preview. So most Mac users will know that when you click an item like this, you can press the space bar to open up a preview of like a, a quick preview of whatever it is you've opened, right? The only thing is this doesn't work for folders. So what does folder preview do? It gives you the ability to quickly open or basically have quick look for folders. So I can open this up like so, and then I can just press down and I can see the desktop folder within the folder. So I'm quick previewing that folder right there. Um, we can try another one, the mobile folder, desktop folder, the cover image. It's just a great way to quickly see what's in a folder without actually having to open up the folder. I don't understand why Mac doesn't already have this. It just makes so much sense for it to already have it. And this folder preview, it basically just looks like it's built into Mac OS. Like you wouldn't even realize that it's there. Fantastic little utility that I use an absolute ton. And then another utility called Pop Clip. So like on iOS, you know, when you highlight some text on iOS, it gives you some options. This basically brings that same functionality to your Mac. So. I can highlight some text like so, and it will automatically come up with the ability for me to search with that text, cut, copy, and paste. This just makes a lot of sense again. I don't know why this isn't already built into Mac OS. It removes so many steps. You don't have to sort of do any keyboard shortcuts or anything. It, like, especially when it comes to like searching some text, it just removes a lot of steps and you can search, cut, copy, and paste, and also look up in the dictionary, the dictionary if you want as well, just very, very quickly. Like a nice little utility that is so, so useful. And I think a lot of people find it very convenient. It also does work in other ways as well. I can't remember how to get it to work in other ways, but you can have it come up with like italics and bold and stuff like that when you're editing a document or whatever. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of functions that come up with this pop clip app. Yeah, pretty cool and very, very useful. That's it for this video. I'll of course leave links to everything down in the description below. If you guys have any suggestions for apps, please leave them in the comments. Make sure to check out my wallpaper packs as well. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and subscribe for more. Thank you.